Hey everybody, in today's guide, I wanna show you how to use the phasing tool in D5 Render 2.9. We'll be recreating this scene you see right here, and I'll show you exactly how to do this. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you have the D5 Live Sync plugin installed. So if you don't have the plugin, all you have to do is go to your D5 launcher, go to workflow, and then you can download it right here. You wanna make sure it's the one with Live Sync. That way you can sync your camera and sync geometry and everything. Once it's done, open up D5. So I've got D5 in the background and I've got RAM. So the only way this works is if you actually use the export method. This won't work if you live sync your model over or direct import. And the reason being is when you do those methods, the model gets recognized as one object and not a bunch of different surfaces. So you see how I'm clicking, I'm getting all these different objects. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you an example. So I've brought this in as a direct import, and as you can see, it's one mesh. So I can't really animate it if it's one piece, right? So that's why we're using the export method because it reads each mesh as its own object. So I'm gonna delete this, go back to Rhino, and let's hit export. So what you're gonna wanna do here is, depending on you know what you wanna send over, I'm gonna send over everything, but you could do it by layer or object selection. So let's say I just wanna send these stairs over, I could do object selection. But most importantly, you're gonna to wanna to switch to a minimum of two layers of layer structure. That way, all these subgroups come through. So I'm going to send it to two layers. Again, if you do one layer, it's, it's basically gonna be flattened like all the others, like the direct import method. So I'm gonna hit export, I'm gonna save that in a folder, and now it's writing to a D5A file. So it's succeeded, it's gonna lift here, drag it out. Okay, I'm just gonna sync it, and now when I go to object, notice how it's a group and I've got all these different objects. So look at that. So these are actual individual objects. So if I double click, I can actually enter the group and now they're all separate. Not like before where it's one giant mesh. Okay. So this is all needed to get this working. So now all we have to do is actually just go over to video mode and under video, if you click template, you're going to see all the different types of animations you can use, right? You can drop it in. So literally like fall out of the sky, they can rise, they can ascend, they can fly in, explode. You've got all these crazy options. I love it. It's phenomenal. So I'm going to hit drop over here. And what I want to do is basically show the roof and all the furniture that's in here, drop in. So I'm going to give it objects to add. So I'm going to click, click my roof. And let's say, for example, I just clicked my roof, just as an example, and I hit done. It's gonna add it to the timeline. And as I hit play, it's going to drop it in, right? But we want it to be more interesting so we can add more and more objects. So I'm gonna go back to drop. And now I'm going to just click interior because I have everything organized nicely. So all these will fall in at the same time, which is really nice. So now watch this. So basically I don't have any furniture, right? And I don't have any interior. I don't have a roof and I don't have furniture. So now when I hit play, it's going to drop the roof. Okay, and I'm just scrolling down and I pause that and then we'll see the furniture come through. But now it's kind of funny, right? Because the roof came down first, but the furniture came second and like it went through the roof, which is a little weird. So what's beautiful about this is it is a timeline. So all I have to do is literally just move my objects around. So this was my roof. This was my furniture. So now, watch this. If I scroll that back and then hit play, it's dropping in all my furniture. And then the roof comes in, right? And you can literally just move this so there's some overlap. And then the roof comes down, which is really, really cool. You can even change the time. So it's just like, you know, our typical camera tracks. If I make this five seconds, and I make this five seconds, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So now it's gonna take about eight seconds in total. And there we go. So here is where we can start customizing things. So I've clicked my drop clip for my roof, right? And I've got a bunch of different settings here. I can do ease in and ease out. This is really nice. If I switch it to linear, watch what's gonna happen. It's not gonna have any slowdown. It's just gonna go like straight down, um, which again, might be good or bad, depending on what you need. And let's just do a comparison to ease in out you'll see that it'll slow down a little and then it'll pick up and then it'll slow down. Again, your personal preference. So now that we've got that there, you can also control if objects are all falling down at the same time. So that's this guy simultaneously. So watch this. So they all come down at the same time. 
I don't like this. I actually really loved the cascading um, version because it's basically like, yeah, look at that. Like all these are kind of coming down at the same time. If I go sequential, it's like it needs to finish first and then it'll happen. You see that? So not as cool as the other one. And it just seems like way too fast. So not a big fan of that. You could slow it with the time interval, right? So notice how I just slowed that down. So that makes it a lot better. But again, that was right under this guy. You could also control the distance. So like the starting point. So if I increase this to, let's say 20, well, let's say 50, right? My start point is all the way over there. And obviously this is extreme, but it's, this is just to illustrate what we're doing here. So now it's starting from up there. So if you notice like, oh, it's, it's too low, that's the controller you need to fix. And then if you want to get a little cheeky, you can add a nice little bounce effect and watch this when they come down, they'll bounce. I'm just going to lower the distance because that was a little extreme. <laughs> you see that little bounce? So that's super fun. Up to you if you want it. I think it's kind of fun and cute. So I'm going to leave it. But you can see, I just animated like a hundred different items, like literally all these items <laughs> in no time at all, all because it was organized nicely with the layer. So that was pretty cool. Um, so I had, you know, one layer that was interior and then one layer that was architecture. So super cool. So just to kind of illustrate that it's this and then this, if I did three layers, I would get these guys too. Right now it's kind of just simplified it to architecture and then all this stuff rather than the sub layer. So that's what all those layers are that I'm talking about here. So just to illustrate that if we switch to three layers and pasted it over here, you're going to see a lot more detail, right? So because it's picking up those layers. So this, this is much better um, in terms of like the optimization of this file, because it actually makes sense. Like, oh, okay. These are just the cabinets. So if you're organized, you're going to have this functionality. And so now this is actually when staggering can get really, really good because now if I were to take this file, right. And then go over to my video and let me just make another clip. So we're starting fresh, right? I'm going to go to a different template. Let's go with, let's go with Poppin just to show you a different one. And now I can actually just click cabinets and now it'll add all the cabinets, right? Again, perks of being organized. Um, let me grab another one. Let's grab furniture blocks. So you could see all those kind of pop in at the same time. I'm going to hit done. Okay. And now we'll hit play. There we go. So again, layers are super important, especially the export method, you know, like you just saw like the big difference, right? If we did three layer versus two layer, it's going to add all those sub layers. So just to show you the comparison, this was called kitchen objects and cabinets. Let me go back to Rhino. That's this stuff, kitchen cabinets, kitchen objects, cabinets. Okay. So that's that third level. Very, very important. Uh, you understand that. So the other thing I'll point out, um, if you don't see this timeline view for any reason, just click this guy. So there we go. So it's basically switching you between camera views and the actual timeline. So if I were to you know, be in this view and then hit add current view and then move my camera, I'd actually see all this animation stuff happening. So it's not just like, oh, you're locked to phasing and no more camera work. No, you can actually do both. You're actually just switching between them, uh, which is, which is awesome. The other thing I'll point out is here, you know, I've been using pop in, uh, before I was using drop, but you can actually blend the two. You actually don't need to just commit to one. So now what I could do is grab the explode one and I want to explode the architecture. So I'm going to click architecture and I'm going to hit done. And now I've got explode here. So now we've got our camera work, which is shot one, right? So if I don't want to be moving forward as I hit play, right, I could just delete that and say you can't undo it, which is fine. So I've got that going and now we've got explode. So that's what I mean. You can have two different effects going on. You're not committed to the same template, right? So lots of functionality there. How I would use this. Um, I think this is really fun for like little diagrams. Like I'll give you a good, good example. So if I set a camera, you know, just like this, and maybe I do a, a simple zoom in. Let's say, let's say it's 10 seconds. I want it to be really, really slow. That way I've got time for everything to pop in. So first thing I would do is I would 
go through my template and let's do a drop for my roof. That way I can get that out of the way with that guy as well. Hit done and just make sure. Yep. Good. So that's nice and slow. So I'm going to do my pop in here and then my roof, which is the drop. So we'll make this five seconds and we'll make this five seconds as well. And now we'll see everything kind of come in nice and slow and pop. And then the roof will come down. So this is kind of like a fun little, little diagram. If you want to make it more like a, like an axonometric type of drawing, uh, I recommend you increase your focal length really, really high. So let's say we do, so we do a hundred, right? I'm going to zoom out a lot. You see how flat it is? Like it looks like an actual drawing now. So now I can go here, update this. And I can copy the parameters and paste it here. Weird that didn't come over. So I'm just going to hit 100. And let's zoom in somewhere, somewhere around here. That's fine. So there's a little bit of motion. So watch this. So nice, gentle slowness. And these guys are popping in. And then the roof comes down. So here, I thought the roof was like, you know, a little bit in the way. And now, because I know this, I can actually just go back grab my drop and now I can change the distance so it's not in the way. So now let me go back, hit play, and now the roof comes down. So you see how easy that is? So they work really well with each other, right? Because they, they literally live on top of each other. So I can make my camera slower. If I make this five seconds, I'm not gonna see my roof come down and I'm moving much faster, but they go hand in hand. So yeah, this was a fun one. Just to recap, I can't stress how important layers are because this whole thing operates on layers, right? And if you don't have that, well, <laughs> you can't really do this um, in a in a nice, nice clean way. Like, you know, just compare this method versus the two layer method. And I'm not saying this was bad. It's just like, we've got so much more control here, right? We've got named layers and everything. So this is great. So I highly recommend doing that. You also need to have the plugin working so you can export again, this isn't going to work if you just do a live sync, because if I were to do a live sync, right, let me just fix my camera. Live sync or direct import. Let me grab my, my regular 3dm and then try to animate this. Okay. We're at the clip here. I'm going to go template and we'll do drop. I'll click this. Okay. And I'll hit done. And then you'll see that's it. Like that's, that's the whole thing, which is good and bad. But again, the point is like, you have to be clever about the export methods or then you just can't, can't do this properly. So yeah, hope you liked the video. As always, please like the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment or an idea for a video suggestion. Again, this actually came from a user. So shout out to them for uh, coming up with this idea. That was a lot of fun. And as always, please subscribe. It really helps the channel out. So I'll see you next time.